Hi, my name is Chelsea Nicolato, and this is my mini lesson for our author study on Gary Soto for group number three. The book I'm using is entitled Chato's Kitchen by the author Gary Soto. And this book is about a cool cat <clears throat> who invites neighbors over for dinner that just happen to be mice. When the mice feel as if something doesn't seem quite right, they ask if they can also invite a friend to dinner to come with them. Chato agrees, and the mice then bring a cool dog to dinner since they can sense Chato's desire to eat them. Chato becomes nervous, but then quickly realizes that they can all get along and have dinner together as friends. He realizes that even though they are very different from one another, they can still be friends and enjoy their time together. <clears throat> this book supports the learning objective because it focuses on the differences and similarities of friends. It supports the multicultural aspect because the author allows the audience to understand that it does not matter what culture you're from or where you live. What matters is the kindness and respect you have within you and your, for others as well as yourself. This book will allow students to compare and contrast different cultures as well as fantasy and realism by looking at the different animals in comparison to their own lives and the people they know. The objective of the lesson is students will be able to compare and contrast fantasy and realism using a Venn diagram and the different animals in the story as well as the people they have encountered in their own lives. So before reading, I'll begin by showing the students different pictures of families eating dinner together as well as portraits of families of different ethnicities and cultures. So these are some of the pictures that I would show them. Different sorts of families having meals together. And also some pictures of just regular portraits of families to show the students that there's all different sorts of families and all different kinds of relationships out there. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, that everybody's a person and everybody should be able to get along and love each other and care for each other. So after I show them those pictures, I will then ask the students to compose a quick write. The students will all be familiar with this practice and they will perform it in their writing journals. They will talk about what they do when they eat dinner together at home with their family, as well as some of the conversations that they have, what they talk about, and maybe some special meals that they like to have with their family for dinner. After they complete their quick write, I will then ask several students to share their quick write response with the rest of the class, whoever is comfortable to do so. And we'll talk about comparing our families to each other as well as the different cultures in the classroom. Then. Then I will introduce the book, Chato's Kitchen, to the class, and I will provide a brief synopsis of the story to help the students become familiar with the text before they listen to the story. We'll also make predictions about the cover, we'll talk about the author and illustrator, and we will also talk about specifically about the author, Gary Soto, and other books that we have read from previous mini lessons from this author study, as well as others that I think the students would have already been familiar with. I will then read the story, Chato's Kitchen, to the students, and I will ask questions throughout to promote a whole group discussion about the story elements such as setting, characters, problem, and solution. I will also ask the students to discuss the fantasy elements of the story and then compare them to realistic moments in their own lives, and the students will already be familiar with what the terms fantasy and realism mean. So for example, Chato invites a family of mice over for dinner from a very different neighborhood than his own. Have you ever had company over for dinner? And if so, how would you make your big guests feel comfortable? This is a, an example of one of the questions I would ask them. This is also probably a pre-reading question I would ask them as well to get them thinking about the story and be able to compare it to their own lives. And then I will also ask students thought-provoking questions to get them to think on a higher level <clears throat> and more critically about the text as well compa as compared to their own lives. And I would ask them, does it matter that the animals are different species? Can they still be friends? How does this compare to friends who are from different cultures? Does it make a difference if friends are from different cultures or neighborhoods? And do you have friends from different cultures or neighborhoods? And what are some things that you have learned from them? And this book and this mini lesson will be taught to a second grade classroom. So these students have already should have enough background knowledge to be able to discuss what a culture is and if they do have friends from other cultures and 
if that has any significance in their lives. So I will then read them the story, <clears throat> Chato's Kitchen, asking questions throughout. And I will begin, for example, on the first page here, and then I will ask some questions as an example as how I would teach this mini lesson. Chato, a low-riding cat with six stripes, was slinking toward a sparrow when he heard the scrape of tiny feet coming from the yard next door. Left, right, left, right. Chato's ears perked up. His tail began to swing to the rhythm. He felt the twinge of mambo in his hips. The movement frightened the sparrow, who shot off into a tree. I then asked the students, <clears throat> what do you think Chato hears? Where do you think he is right now? What do you think he's going to do about the sound that he hears? And then I would also show them the illustration here. And ask them what they think Chato is feeling by looking at his face in the picture. And possibly what is he going to do about the sound that he hears. And then we'll go into the story with further detail. And I would ask prompted questions throughout, as well as hold brief discussions with the students to allow them to express themselves about the story and think critically about it. So after I read them the story, I will ask the students to complete a graphic organizer comparing and contrasting Chato, the family of mice, and the dog. And we will talk about comparing and contrasting. And this is something that <clears throat> they will already understand the terms, compare and contrast. But I also put same and different underneath just to remind them what those two terms mean. This is what the graphic organizer would look like on the board. We have Chato, same and different. The mice, same and different, and the dog, same and different. And we would talk about how Chato, the mice, and the dog, how they have similarities and how they have differences and what they are, specifically citing evidence from the text, which is very important. After we complete this graphic organized together as a whole class on the board and complete our whole group discussion, I will then ask the students to pair off and to perform a think-pair-share. Think and I will ask them how the families in the book compare to the families of the pictures that I showed them earlier in the lesson, as well as their own family and other families that they know, such as families of their friends. After they complete their think, pair, share, I will ask them to return to their seats. They will then be placed in pairs to complete a Venn diagram together. The students will complete a Venn diagram discussing the fantasy of the book in comparison with realistic life. The teacher will walk the room to check for understanding, so I will be walking around making sure that the students are not only working, but understanding the concept of fantasy and reality, as well as what the terms compare and contrast mean. So this is what the Venn diagram will look like. I have fantasy, fake, just so they remember, reality, real, and they would talk about different evidence from the text on what is fantasy in the story and what is reality in the story. So, for example, a fantasy element would be that the mice are a family and that they're moving into a new neighborhood. When in reality, mice don't speak, they don't wear clothes, they don't move into a new neighborhood, anything such as that. However, in the contrast, real families do move into new neighborhoods. They do, of course, have conversations with each other, and they do get invited over for dinner to other friends' or families' homes. And then also, in the middle, I would like them to describe different situations in their own lives as well as the text that uses both fantasy and reality. So do families come together for dinner? Yes. Do they have friends of different cultures or different quote unquote species? Yes they do. So that would be something they could put in the middle. The students will complete the Venn diagram with their partner Without assistance from the teacher, I will just be walking the room just to check for understanding and ask them if they need help with anything or just some clarification on any of the terms. This will also determine if they met the objective, if they can complete this independently. The teacher will, well, I will use the Venn diagram to determine if the students comprehended the terms, compare and contrast, and fantasy and real realism, as well as if they thought critically about the story by comparing it to realistic families. So that'll be that'll determine whether or not they met the objective. Did they understand compare and contrast? Did they understand fantasy and reality? And did they use specific evidence or cite specific evidence from the text to complete their Venn diagram, as well as from the pictures I showed them before the lesson began, and in addition to their real lives and their real families? 
And the lesson will be successful if the students can effectively compare and contrast the fantasy and realistic elements of the story as well as compare it to realistic families. If the students can think critically about their own friends and the similarities they share in, a difference in addition to the differences they each have, then the lesson would be considered successful. The students should be able to think critically about the text in terms of realistic cultures and the differences and similarities they all share, in addition to the fact that everyone can be respectful and get along. And that is the conclusion of my mini lesson. I thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.